My name is Mary Schofield, and I started in the Red Barn many years ago, probably 25 or more, with my late husband, Ernie Schofield. There was an ad in the paper, our local advocate, and uh, Ernie and I had sort of, we'd stopped boating. Uh, we wanted something to do. So here was this ad in the paper, wanted uh, volunteers, capable of painting, uh, carpentry, uh, anything. So we thought, yeah. So we turned up and met the uh, quite famous uh, uh, managing director, Lloyd Whiteway. My name is Jean Penn, and uh, I answered an ad in The Advocate that they needed volunteers, and I thought it'd be fun. And I've always been kind of interested in live theater, but not for me to do anything, but just interested. So I went, and next thing I knew, I had a job. <laughs> My name is John Penn, and I, I, remember, I remember starting at the barn. I remember that you brought me into the barn uh, because you had already volunteered. And so I was following along and listening to you, it sounded so interesting, I thought I had to get involved. Well, I'm uh, Bud Leggett. Uh, I started at the barn quite a few years ago. And uh, uh, John had uh, written me a, l a little letter uh, he was wanting a donation. I, I said, uh, I, I haven't got any money to, to give you for, for the barn. And uh, the, only, the only thing I can do is paint the, the signs. And he said, well, he said, that's better than any uh, donation. If you can uh, paint the signs for us, and uh, so that's that, that's the uh, the way that I, I I got connected with the barn. Muriel Leggett and I started working at the barn in the early '90s, and uh, I worked at the food counter and took uh, tickets at the door and sometimes handed out. Uh, booklets and also when they were having Lucky Draw, selling Lucky Draw tickets. But just wherever I was needed, why well, I, I was willing to help. I guess the, the way we got involved with the sets was I think Lloyd approached us, Ernie and I and Bud I think at the time we were on the same team of volunteers. I think he, he approached us and said, you know, what do you think? Can, can we do this? And so we put our collective heads together and said, okay. So he showed us where all the, whatever props were available, he showed us where they were down in the basement and where all the, the, the flats were, as they called them. Just about eight or 10 feet tall by about four feet wide and just great things put together with a two by four and, um, and plywood or whatever. And, Peggy and Grace was awesome. It was the most amazing thing. And what it was, was a story of a Winnebago and two uh, entirely different women taking a trip across Canada in a Winnebago. Well, do you get a Winnebago? Do you build a Winnebago? So anyway, they started and they built this Winnebago. But you see, it was half a Winnebago because you had to see into this Winnebago. When we put that Winnebago together, oh, we had to go and yeah. scrounge some wheels. Yeah. And so we went down to the local Wreckers bar and we, we got two wheels. We only needed two. He wanted to sell us four, but we only needed two. <coughs> so we finally argued a, a price that was dirt cheap for two wheels. And then he threw in the steering column because we had to have we had to have a steering wheel. They phoned me and asked if if I would come to their meeting, and uh, so I I went up there and and I had no idea what what they had in mind. 
where he went and he looked at a Winnebago and he duplicated all the, all of the red and blue lines on the outside of that Winnebago and so it looked perfect. As a matter of fact, one person at one point said, you know, I think you could probably just drive that right off the stage. <laughs> so, look. so we would be asked, some of us, would you care to take an actor or two? So I did for many years, Ernie and I did for many years, and got to know these young people and just love them. And we became close to them because they were away from their homes. And sometimes it wasn't Toronto, it was across Canada that we had actors and actresses. So it was great fun. And, you know, you'd end up feeding them and, and uh, finding out their lives and what they had, uh, where they were going, what they really wanted to do, and they became your young friends. It was, it was a delight for me always. So. Uh, you were only supposed to let them sleep here, but I couldn't quite do that. <laughs> Not with these kids, they were wonderful. I think mostly the, the one that we really started ad adopting and diluting was with uh, Anna Green Gables and then Nonsense. But Anna Green Gables, uh, Two, well, four of them have gone really well in their acting careers from that. They were fun. They, you, you know how we have the little window in the, in, over the sink? They'd sit like this yeah. while they'd be cooking. Yeah. And a piece for them, a piece for me, you know. You, you just got to know the kids. Yeah. yeah. And the original yeah. barn was a barn. So there's lots of gaps in between the boards. And so, windy days, the wind would be coming through. Rainy days, the rain would come through, and so you'd see the patrons move away from the side. Oh, what I remember are the bats. There was a lot of them. I recall back, uh, it would be in the 80s, and when uh, Dracula was the one I remembered, and yeah. during during the uh, play, there was a bat flew right across the, the stage, and it seemed right at the precise time in the play, <laughs> and uh, uh, that caused quite a laugh in the in the theater. And there was one particular toilet in the women's washroom, and it had been a stall for the bowl. And there was the big ring left in these old farm walls. What are farm walls made of in farms? Kind of a stone-like plaster, you know. Um, and that was always interesting. So I'd hear the ladies say, well, I want to wait till you're out of there. I want to be in the stall with, with the bowl ring. And we really had open air uh, dressing rooms uh, up at the top in a, a loft which had probably been a hay loft uh, for the actors but I always kept it like a country barn and I would pick up the bouquets sometimes out of the ditch sometimes they were weeds so I would put stuff in the in the dressing rooms for the females particularly in the males and they'd get a kick out of that it was a country barn Opening nights were so great, and we all dressed up. We dressed up to the nines, and the Royal Alec couldn't touch us. That's how, how great it was. My fair lady, the costumes were such fun. And they had me all dressed in one costume, too, with a huge hat. They're heavy, those hats. And I was trying to take tickets, and I was, you know, what to do this? Of course, that made them all laugh. And we had a wonderful hat and long dresses and the parasols right from the cast. We had the bagpipes and uh, invited guests uh, from all over. And uh, no, we, uh, we made a big to-do of opening tonight. It was wonderful, it really was. And you were on a uh, high, uh, you were on a roll, the adrenaline was rolling and it was just lovely. I, I enjoyed that much too. Now, I all my windows face the red barn. I bought this condominium unit because I was so 
in love with the red barn and it just happened it was available. But anyway, I actually didn't hear the first signs, the, the sounds, the, the uh, uh, fire wheels. I, I turned over and I thought, my God, my shears, my curtains are on fire. And I leapt out of bed, looked out, and I thought, dear God, it can't be. And I ran to my living room area, looked out. I thought, dear God. I thought, the barn's on fire. It's on fire, really. I ran out to the balcony. It was cold. Here I am in my nightie. And I was backed up against my brick wall, warm, hot, the 18th of April. That's how close the fire was to our building. So I ran back in and watched and watched, and I watched and I watched, and I just, the tears came down, came down, and I thought, I can't believe this is happening. I've got to tell him. I picked up the phone and I called Lloyd Whiteway. He said, Mary, you're hysterical. What are you saying? I said, the barn's on fire. It's going down. And he just was crying. I can't believe what you're saying. And I watched it for the rest of the night go down. I cried. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't believe it. We it was pretty well down by the time we heard because we were up north. We were on our way home and we got a call from our granddaughter and that's how we learned and of course we went right over and there it was, it was like it's losing a, a friend. It was just devastating. And we, we never saw the fire but uh, I heard about it on the Sunday morning, and uh, we went up in the afternoon and drove along the lake shore. Yeah. But it was just heartbreaking to see smoldering. Yeah. Yeah, very bad. Well, we were we were devastated. We couldn't we couldn't believe it because you know the number of years and the number of hours that we had devoted, and to see it all go up in flames. It, it was devastating. And it was just, it was like part of my life had gone down because I'd spent roughly 25 years there with my, my late husband, loving it. And uh, it was history and it was part of my lifestyle. And it had gone. Uh, you come to think of the barn as a, as a living thing. And it's something you've, you've experienced. And then to see the flames was hard. I think the barn is a very sad thing that it burned because it was more than just a barn. It had, it had a soul, it had a heart or something. I felt really sad. Yeah, I, I was very sad about it about uh, losing the barn, and uh, I, I, I didn't know how, how we were going to replace it. It left, it left a big hole in my heart, and still does. And maybe someday it will be resurrected in some form or another. We'll hope for that. Amen. <laughs>